Let's speak to the Kingston University economics professor, Steve Keane, who joins us from London. Steve, thank you very much indeed for your time. What do you make of this? Well, I think it's the end of a long run of incompetence by May and by the Conservative Party in general. Remember that uh, she was actually somebody who voted for Remain, then somehow made herself a campaigner to be the person to take through the Brexit, uh, then got caught in the round roundabout of uh, European negotiations, whereas Yanis Varoufakis said they didn't want it to occur and they were giving her the runaround. She's handled it all quite ineffectively. And, of course, by calling that snap election in an attempt to destroy Jeremy Corbyn, she instead destroyed her own majority. That's the only thing, really, that's kept her in power. And now I think her own party is just exasperated by her and wants to change despite the risk of losing power in Parliament itself. You say that she's been ineffective in her negotiations, but is it not the impossible job? Within her own party, there are people who want at least five or six different options. There's Remain, there's hard Brexit, there's soft Brexit, there's the Canada Plus deal, the Norway deal. There are people who want a second referendum. She couldn't really ever satisfy all of those different interests in her own party. And she's, while she's been engaged in these extremely difficult negotiations, is now the time to try to oust her? Well, I don't think there's... A, I, well, sorry, I'd never give the Conservative Party much credit for timing, but remember, the only reason she doesn't have an effective majority is because she called that snap election and lost what majority Cameron still had after 2015, and therefore she didn't have a large enough faction nor enough personal power to push the party with her. So she created her own fragility, and I think in that situation... She was on a hiding to nothing to lose in the long run. And this is probably the culmination of that. And to me, it's interesting that the Tories are willing to risk the possibility of losing power completely to replace her. Absolutely. I mean, as I said, she hasn't really satisfied almost anybody within her own party. But the people who are most angry, and surely the people who really are most responsible for triggering this vote that is about to happen, are the ones who are most in favour of a hard Brexit. If she loses this motion, this secret ballot later today, what are the chances of a hard Brexiteer becoming the leader of the Conservative Party? Or do you think there might be a chance that actually a Remainer could become the leader of that party? Because let's remember, the majority of Parliament across all parties voted to remain. It was just that 52% of their constituents voted to leave. Yeah, I think you're right. I think the Remain is most likely to, to win and then basically say, let's call a, call a referendum. And uh, the referendum, if, even though I think it could have been exactly the same result with, with different people voting different ways, given how populace has reacted over here to the shenanigans of the last two years, uh, it will take the pressure off Parliament. So I think you're probably right. Maybe you remain a winning, calling a referendum immediately, a second referendum, and then that will take the pressure away from the parliamentary of course, if that referendum goes the same way, then heaven knows what the UK is going to do. What do you think it means for Brexit? I mean, clearly the referendum is going to throw up probably as much confusion as the first one because the country is still pretty split down the middle. But what does it mean overall for Brexit in terms of the 29th of March being the date that the UK is supposed to leave? I think that's gone unless it's a hard Brexit now. The only way, I mean, the Europeans must be loving this because just as the Europeans didn't want uh, Cyprus to succeed in Greece and use the, the fact that they controlled the currency to completely torture both the country and the party, they couldn't do the same to the UK because the UK still has the pound. But they've given them the same runaround, and this is basically 2 nil for Brussels against uh, its, uh, its member states who are unhappy with Brussels itself. So, uh, again, the country itself... It, it won't lead to the same violence as you see in France, just because of the nature of, of British British culture. But I think the level of frustration you're seeing with the yellow yellow vests in France would be echoed by the industrial wasteland of, of, of Britain, which is the part that really voted for Brexit. Steve, I'm quite happy to hear the accent with which you're speaking, because it allows me to ask you a question as an outsider. You're a professor of economics. Every single analysis that has been done by the government shows that whatever the outcome of Brexit, hard, soft, whatever it might be, Canada, Norway kind of deal, every single scenario is going to damage the British economy. As an outsider, how do you see the country voting to make itself poorer by leaving the European Union? What's going on? It voted to make itself poorer by voting for the Conservatives in the first place, bringing in austerity during an economic recession caused by a collapse in a housing bubble uh, and by far too much private debt. 
So they've already voted the wrong way. The, the idea that people actually understand what they're doing in voting, I think, is a myth. Um, so when what really caused Brexit, when you look at it, was the damage austerity did to the, living, to the living standards of people in what used to be the industrial heartland of the UK, which is now a wealthier wasteland. So they've already done the vote. The, 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 I don't think you can separate the impact of austerity from the vote for Brexit. So, um, and I don't think, I'm also, I, I regard austerity as far more dangerous and far more deadly to Britain's economy than Brexit would ever be. At least if there's Brexit occurs, uh, what will happen is the currency will fall, which it should do, and that will give manufacturing a potential boost, which it needs, and which some people here have been campaigning for for a long time. Uh, to me, it's just amusing that they went meekly along with austerity to cause the damage and are now debating furiously Brexit, which relatively to austerity is a, is a minor issue. How is Theresa May going to fight this? What does she have to do in the next few hours to convince enough of her own members to back her idea that the deal that she struck with the European Union is the best way forward? Because what she's arguing is that without being able to satisfy extremists on either side, the extremists being the hard Brexiteers and those who want to remain, this middle-of-the-road deal that she's reached with the European Union is the one that will satisfy at least the, the, the basic desire to leave the European Union while still trying to protect some of its economic prosperity. This is the EU's second largest economy, of course. Yeah, like I, I agree with you. I think the, um, when, when I look at what she put forward, it's basically being a member of the EU without monetary union and without free movement of labour. That's all it comes down to. Uh, but now what you're dealing with is the ideological extremes inside the Conservative Party who are on about, you know, Britain for Brits and, and things of this nature and the par our parliament makes our laws, not, 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 you know, not uh, Brussels, versus those who are in favour of a free trade group. And she's never going to reconcile those two. I think the only thing she can really do, and I can see her doing it right now, is saying it's me or Jeremy Corbyn. If you uh, allow, allow this coup to go forward, uh, we, if we lose in the House, of the House uh, the, the consequence could well be uh, that I call and an election is called and we lose it to Jeremy Corbyn. So it'll be a scare campaign about Corbyn. That's about all she's got left. OK, Steve, just finally, what's your gut feeling? How's it going to go in that secret ballot later? <sighs> I'm guessing she'll lose. I think she's been such a disappointment to the Conservatives. They thought she was the new Maggie Thatcher. Well, Maggie, uh, what, the damage she did, I think, was in, incalculable to the UK economy. But her political power was unassailable. And Theresa May has been a very poor uh, cartoon version of that. And her, her campaigning was appalling during the election. And I think I just want to be rid of her and at least put somebody forward who might, when an election occurs, actually be able to campaign successfully against Jeremy Corbyn. Steve, really appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed for joining us on TRT World. That's Kingston University Professor of Economics, Steve Keane.